kind of late on a Tuesday night. And, and I want to talk about the Vox VT40X, which I've talked about before. Let me tell you why I'm doing this video. I'm not even going to play a note tonight. I just want to really quickly uh, share my thoughts on this. Um, about three days ago, I started noticing that a bunch of my my videos about the Vox VT40X, I started kind of not necessarily blowing up, but on my YouTube channel, getting way more views than, than they usually get. Uh, so I've made, I don't know, four or five videos about the VT20X, the VT40X, um, both of them. And uh, <clears throat> I just noticed, wow, it's a lot of views. And, and so I just finished just now, I was out cruising around on YouTube, sitting in my bedroom and watching it on my TV and flipping through. And I saw a, a video about uh, from, from Anderton's in England and they were having a shootout. Rob Chapman was there. He's not been there in a while. And he was uh, uh, coming back with Lee Anderton and, and he was putting the head the headset on the blindfold, uh, puts on like welding goggles. And then he was talking about, or, or they were just trying different amps that were say $350, $400 or less. And uh, they're taking one, he, he did not know. He's doing two amps at a time. And, and so they started the video. Go watch this video. That's what I want to say. Go watch this video. It's going to validate a whole lot of what I've been saying for a long time. And that's why, why I'm delighted to do this little quick video. Is um, So they put a Vox VT40X down. They put a Marshall, something like a, whatever the, the new Marshall 50 watt is, that, that's affordable. Um, and so Rob's got his thing on, he's playing, he's playing some Chapman guitar and he's saying, man, this one, he's playing the VT40X. Man, this sounds really great. And it, he plays a, like a crunch setting, he plays a clean setting. And it's, of course it does, it sounds really great. And those guys, they've, they've got the advantage of having really good mics and really good studio, really good lighting and everything. And so I'm sitting there going, yeah, that's, it's a great sounding amp. Uh, I wonder how far the VT40X will make it against all these other amps because you can see that Lee had a bunch of the newer ones lined up, right? So the Vox wins over the Marshall to start. Then he comes out with something else like a Katana and it beats the brand new Katana, the Generation 3 or whatever it is. And then he comes out and he has like a Fender Champion, which I like the Fender Champion amps. So, you know, I've got a Fender uh, LT25 over here, which is super cheap amp. Uh, it, it does not hold up from a, from a amps, from like a, uh, saturation type sound. It does not hold up to the VT40X or VT20X, but it has great effects in it. So I do like the LT25 a lot from Fender, but Rob did not like the Fender. They tried out a orange, which he likes a little bit. Uh, but still the Vox VT40X wins. They bring out, I can't remember what else. They bring out a catalyst from line six, uh, Various different ones, and some of them he says, "Oh, this just sounds terrible." Does this, this, this sound terrible, <laughs> or no? This sounds fizzy. Fizzy is the word these days. I still am not exactly sure I know what people mean by that. I mean, distortion's distortion. I just know that that a distorted sound to me sounds better when it goes through a tube. It just does. And uh, I mean, I've got my Vox uh, AC10 over here that I bought from my buddy Lee Setzer, and, and I really love. I just love that Vox uh, distortion type sound. I like, you know, I've got the uh, Tone Master, I've got two Tone Master amps. I got the Deluxe and I got the the uh, uh, Twin, and, and and I like both of those. Now we're talking about, you know, uh, it, it modeled modeled uh, amp distortion, but still, I keep going back to my Vox amps, my my little uh, my little Vox amps with the <clears throat> AX7. That I think Lee. At the end of the video, it talks about what kind of tube is in there, and he—I think he misnames it. It's a, it's 12 AX7 that's in there. At any rate, goes through the whole thing. I think it shoots out against nine amps, and in the end, the Vox VT40X wins. And I've been saying this, folks. You know, I'm not trying to you know, me myself. Uh, all I say is I've got a good set of ears. I know what really sounds good. I hate that I've never honestly recorded the sound of a VT40X uh, really well. I've always had little old Zoom mics that I put a couple feet in front of it. I've never really mic'd, mic'd my uh, uh, little Vox amps, my little cheap Vox amps up really well. So I don't know that my any of the videos that I've shared out there have probably inspired anybody much. <laughs> I 
I will say this, uh, I, I, have, I have always tried to feature the, um, the versatility of these amps. Now, uh, uh, from an from a effects point of view, they're, it's pretty limited because it's old technology. I mean, the VT, uh, VTX series came out, what, seven or eight years ago? But, you know, I made a video last year, does it still hold up? And, 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 you know, nobody was talking about that amp. Nobody has been, I've just not been hearing much big buzz about it. Even though all along, every time somebody wants to talk to me about what, what kind of amps do I have that sound really great, I always put that in there. I say, this amp really, people say punch above its weight. <laughs> I gotta tell you, this, this sucker slam dunks. It kicks some massive butt above its weight. <laughs> But let me tell you, as much as I like my VT40X, my VT40X right now, it's out in the garage because I got a Fender uh, GTX100. And the thing I like about the GTX100 uh, is the looping capabilities and, and it has some really good models and stuff in it. So that's the one I've currently got on my desk over here. I got my AC10 over here. But if you want to know the one that I like even better than the 40X, folks, the VT20X, the smaller one, to me, I don't know why in this room, if, if, if all you want to do is record or enjoy uh, reasonable volumes, if you, if you don't need to gig, if you just want to have a great amp to, to, that you can just record and, and, and super enjoy jamming along with other stuff, a lot of times I'll come out here and I'll, I'll uh, you know, just pull something off of Alexa. I don't want to wake it up, uh, but I'll, I'll, um, tell it to play a backing track or something. And this is the amp that I'll turn on and really just crank. And because I, I can sit here and just flip through every one of these little, I've got my own presets that I've made. Maybe at some point now that there's a more, little more attention since the VT40X won that, maybe it's, it would be worth it for me to go back and show how I create my presets and what my favorite presets on the VT20X um, and 40X series I have. I think I've got, I think I have maybe both these amps set up the same. Uh, this is the one I play still to this day more in the studio than anything else. I love the uh, software that, that, that you use to edit. Uh, it's, it's simple. It's a cool visual thing. Uh, it, it, it's really easy. Like I say, it has a very preset way. You have to do your, your drives if you're going to put like a, a clon or something or a tube scream or whatever in there you got that then you've got what your modulations and you got your uh echoes or, or your delays and you got your reverbs and i think you maybe you then then your amp so you can't move these things around so they are they are limited amps in what you're able to program them to do but they're pretty unlimited as far as to how dang cool they sound <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just think they knocked it out of the park with this amp. When I first got this amp, I thought, my goodness, wow, this is it, 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 the, the revolutionary thing that they did, that some people think, and even Lee Anderton says in the video, they think it's, some people thought it was gimmicky that you would put in the preamp a tube. So, you know, one of these days I'll have to replace this thing, I guess. I, I don't know exactly how. I guess you just take this off and there's a way you have to be and you just unplug it. Eventually that thing will probably go. But for right now, I've been playing for seven or eight years with this little amp. This is the VT20X. Uh, I, I play. I had this amp for about eight or nine months and loved it so much. I said, "Okay, I want that kind of sound when I go out and jam with guys." And so I've played. I'm gonna say I've only played maybe half a dozen gigs with the 40X, and I did that with like a four, uh, three piece band. Uh, I grew up with a band called the Knuckleheads. Uh, it was just, just some of my old buddies, old friend Jeff Serzang on drums, Jonathan McGinnis. Uh, typically on guitar, sometimes Rodney Klein on bass. <clears throat> and so sometimes uh, I, I take that 40X out and, and we take a bass amp with us. And sometimes Jonathan and I would take turns playing bass and while the other one would play through the 40X. And Jeff would play through a set of what kind of drums is it he's got? I can't remember. God, 
it's just a killer set of drums that he's got and it cuts 40 at 40 watts is all you need i mean uh i mean we're slamming some bass uh, you know non-mic to drums like a lot of times these are just jam sessions we do for parties and stuff like that but so so i had bought this one and i said okay i gotta have this sound in a slightly big ramp and and, and so i went and got the 40x I have toyed at times, uh, I've toyed with the idea of getting the 100 watt, it used to be a 100 watt version of this. I think it would have been worth having. Uh, I don't even know if they still make it. You can get the 20X, you can get the 40X. I'm just telling you, if you're looking for a really good in the studio amp, that is like this one, I think it's I think it's 200 bucks or something. Is it even 229, 24? I don't know. I think I bought this one, I bought it, it was like 189 bucks maybe uh, eight years or so ago. And then I bought the 40X maybe for 289 or something like that. Uh, might have been a little more than that. I think they sell them for 349 now. I just wanted to say, uh, <clears throat> throw my two cents out there again. If you want to actually hear me playing, like I said, I, didn't, I don't have a mic'd up as well as what Lee and, and Rob had there on that Anderton's video. But the one thing I do is I show how the software package works. And, and I take you through a lot of the various sounds and stuff that are in there. So I've got one. I, I would recommend you watch my video on the VT20X. You get the very same sounds either way. Just the 40X is louder. And the thing I will say is, even though this thing doesn't have a, you know, you have to actually have, like he says, the wall war. You've got a, an adapter that you use to plug this thing in. And you have no crazy cool line outs. You don't have any balanced run balanced or anything like that. You've got no... Uh, impulse responses or anything. But if you go out the headphone out, which is also a line out, uh, if you go out the headphone out on this thing into a, a Scarlet or whatever your thing is that goes directly into your computer to record, it sounds just as good, in my humble opinion, as all, it's like my Helix with the IRs and stuff, or my Boss IR200, uh, just coming out through this little headphone out here and going direct out you're going to love the way it sounds. You could record, I, I'm, I'm, you know, it doesn't surprise me that nobody has made a hit album. Who makes hit albums anymore anyway? But I, I honestly believe with a little amp just like this, you could make a hit record if you just took your time, tweaked a few things on it. The, the, the amp sounds in there, and I'm not talking about running the little distortions. Yeah, you got your mythic distortion, you got your you got your clons, you got your tube screamers, you got your Timmy type things, and all that. Uh, that it, it's it's just as typical as any other uh, solid state amp when it comes to that kind of thing. The reverbs are pretty dang great. The uh, delays and stuff pretty dang good. I'm not gonna say that. I think the fenders maybe are better. I think the fenders and the boss both are better from effects point of view. But when it comes to just really sounding like an amp, that little baby right there matters. The AX7 uh, in these Vox amps. I just think it was brilliant. They came up with this years and years ago. I just don't, I don't think it's been beat. Now that's if you just want really good amp sounds. And that's why I, I just, as I'm watching, I'm watching Rob Chapman, I can just, I, I can't even see his eyes, but you can see the smile on his face every time he goes to that, Nikki's in there singing. Every time he goes back to the Vox, he doesn't know it's a Vox. <laughs> it very much surprised him. It shocked him when he found out what, because, you know, the thing he says, which, which I agree, it's not a great looking amp. Yep, I mean, it looks old fashioned. It just, it doesn't look great. It doesn't look as cool as the Black Stars or the High Watts or, or the Catalyst for that matter, or the Catanas. All these amps are really great looking and they're modern. They got all these modern features. Uh, uh, you know, balanced line outs and get, we don't, we don't have an effects loop, no effects loop in either one of these. Does it matter if it's just the nice tone, the nice tone of a Telecaster or a Strat or a Les Paul or an ES type guitar, virtually everything that I've thrown at this little amp and it's bigger brother has sounded killer. And, and I really don't know that I've got a better sounding amp. Now, now, you know, you may buy one and totally disagree. Rob Chapman, who I think has as, as discerning an ear as anybody I've ever watched in these videos, he he came to that conclusion. And it just absolutely validated 
what I've been saying for a long time, so it tickled me. It just kind of, once in a while, it just kind of tickles me to, to think that maybe I'm right about something, because I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just a guy that's, you know, I've played in bands for a long time. I want to get off again. I've played a lot in church. Uh, I, I jam all the time. I practice all the time. I have fun. It's, it's the way I blow off my steam. And I absolutely love the Vox Valvetronic amps, VT20X, VT40X. I've never played the 100X. Like I say, don't even know if you can still get them anymore. Probably could trade around and find one. Uh, if you can, then that would be a monster amp, I would imagine. That should be affordable. I, 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 I still might look into it. <laughs> I, I think sometimes, you know, man, I thought a dozen times, maybe I'd like to get that 100 watt version. But then again, I don't know how much more uh, at my age I'm going to be going out and playing and trying to gig. And, you know, you can get by with, with small ramps these days. And still, you know, for the most part, it probably makes sense that I would take a Tone Master or something out with my Helix and, and run out the back and just have a little bit of volume out front that I, you know, the, the 40X though is a gigable amp, you know, uh, and Chapman even says that. He says, at some point he says, you know, this is an affordable amp, but I think I'd gig with it. <laughs> and I thought, yep, it works great for that. It, it is it is the it is the amp that sounds like classic rock. And, and it, it can do, it can do Fender sounds, it can do a boutique type sounds, I think sound really great on it. Uh, it does great Marshalls. Of course, it does great Voxes. The Fender cleans on it are really nice. Uh, it's just got a good little selection of amp models that were created. And, and now it's funny how six or seven years ago, now it's a bygone era, isn't it? All these other things, the quad cortexes and all these different, um, you know, even, even the, the, the Tone Master foot pedal thing now is, is starting to, starting to grow a little bit in in uh, in its popularity. I've run on long enough. I think my wife is getting impatient with me being, <laughs> being out here. I thought I'd just throw this out again. This is not me boring you with playing guitar. I haven't played a single note tonight. I'm just giving my opinion. Go watch that video and you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see why Rob likes it, why Rob loves it. You just ain't going to get a bad sound out of it. If you're halfway playing good, it's going to sound good. That's my two cents. Peace to all who watch. Subscribe to the channel if you like. Throw in your comments and tell me if you think I'm right or wrong, particularly if you own a VT40X, VT20X. Like I say, in my opinion, the 20X sounds just as good or better. I honestly play it more because it's lower volume. I get that great sound without having to hurt anybody. Check in with me later, folks. And again, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think.